he's an old school throwback linebacker, right? This is, if you're looking for a true thumping middle linebacker maniac commanding the defense. Welcome into the Hot Read Podcast for Wednesday, April the 5th. I'm your host, Easton Freeze, director of published content here at Broadway Sports Media. We're also brought to you by the 440 Podcast Network. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day, everybody. Hope you've had a, a decent start to your week. And as we turn the corner into the back stretch here, we uh, are going to talk about linebackers. And by we, I mean uh, me, your host, Easton Freeze, and my producer, JT. JT, how are you? I'm good. Finally back in Nashville. Good to be back after How spending your, the weekend on the East Coast. Your up to New Jersey. <clears throat> it was good, you know, good. as well as the Garden State of New Jersey can be, I guess. So, <laughs> sure, sure. So today we're talking linebackers, and it is the first of many episodes on this podcast feed that we'll be doing between now and the draft, which is three some odd weeks away. We're going through every position in, the, well, not every, we're not doing special teamers, but everybody but the special teamers in this draft, we're going to go position by position and discuss our top 10 prospects at that position. Uh, today, it's just JT and I. In the future for these, we've got a couple of guests lined up, so excited to get to chat different positions with some different experts in different areas in sports media. Um, but for now, JT, you and I have both put together our top 10 lists of this linebacker class. We have not revealed those lists to one another. It is based on our research and our tape study and uh, our, our work covering the draft. So it's it's opinion based. There is the consensus board that we have for reference. And so we can go ahead and take a look at that real quick. The consensus Top 10 linebackers in this class are Drew Sanders out of Arkansas, Jack Campbell out of Iowa, Trenton Simpson out of Clemson, Diane Henley out of Washington State, Henry Toa Toa out of Alabama, Noah Sewell out of Oregon, DeMarvian Overshone out of Texas, Ovin Popo out of Auburn, and uh, Dorian Williams out of Tulane, and Nick Herbig out of Wisconsin. So before we get into our own top 10s, JT, looking at that top 10 consensus list, according to the consensus mock draft database, is there a player in the consensus top 10 that is not in your top 10? And if so, let's discuss why we chose to leave these players out. Yeah. So on mine, um, interesting enough, I left um, DeMarvian Overshawn out of my top 10. Oh, um, interesting. And that's really just because, I mean, after you get through the top five or six, it really just becomes what you're looking for in in these linebacker prospects. It is a very shallow. Yeah, it's, it's a choose your own adventure um, situation after. It's the a top very guys, shallow sure. class for sure. So there's just there's like one or two guys. Like he'd be like number eleven on mine for sure. Okay, but there were uh, one or two guys down uh, that didn't make the top ten on the consensus board that I just liked a little bit better, and I think showed a little bit more this past season than. DeMarvian Overshawn. And also it's very much just a um, kind of a positional thing with linebackers that it, it, some of these guys I put on here because I think they can be a top 20 linebacker in the league if they're given the right circumstances. Right. You're right that this class overall the entire draft class is kind of hit or miss at any given position. It is either an oasis, an oasis or a wasteland. Uh, the linebacker position definitely falls into the wasteland category on the consensus board. There's not a single linebacker in this class that is projected to go in the first round. Um, there may end up being one guy off the board, but I'd be shocked if there's more than one. And then, you know, the 10th, the 10th consensus guy, Nick Herbig out of Wisconsin is the 150th overall player on the board, which is a, um, let's see, 150 would be like a late fourth round, early fifth round pick. Um, so it's certainly, yeah, an early fifth round pick. Um, so you don't have a ton of talent. And like you said, it is relatively shallow after the top arguably two to four guys. I think that there's kind of a, a division of, 
of power once you get up to that tier. The only guy in the consensus top 10 that I left out was Nick Herbig out of Wisconsin. He would probably be my 11th or 12th guy. Ultimately, I just wasn't impressed. I won't go into a ton of detail, but I wasn't as impressed with him as some of these other guys. And like you said, you get to a point after the top four or so guys where you're really just looking for the kind of player that you are interested in and you know what you value in a in a linebacker is going to dictate how exactly you view some of these guys i'm trying to pull up his measurements so that we can at least get a baseline there but i am failing to do so so far jt um if you wouldn't mind while i'm looking for his measurements maybe let's 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 do a couple at a time um so give me give me your seventh through 10 you're descending from 10 down what is your 10 through seven slot on your linebacker top 10 board my 10th linebacker on my board here is ivan pace jr out of cincinnati the university of cincinnati yep my ninth is one who you might have to scroll down a little bit on the boards but i like him that much um out of utah muhammad diabate i really like him uh, on, at the ninth spot, my eighth is Henry Toa Toa from Alabama, and number seven, Owen Popo out of Auburn. Okay, interesting. Before I give you my uh, first four guys, and then we can kind of discuss, um, we can we can share notes a little bit with Herbig out of Wisconsin. He had a seven seven five RAS. It's his size that kind of turned me off. Very poor in the size department, um, six, two and an eighth inches tall, 240 pounds, uh, 25 bench press reps. All of those are very low. Um, and then he's just kind of an average athlete. Now he's got elite speed, uh, a, a four, six, five, 40 time, but a really nice 10 and 20 yard split. He's got, he's got closing speed that you're looking for, but explosiveness grade was just good. Uh, composite agility grade was just good really nothing to write home about in terms of him as a as a twitchy explosive athlete and so that's why I, I ended up leaving him off of my top 10 list let me give you my 10 through 7 and then we can discuss a couple of these guys on the back half my 10th guy was muhammad i'm not sure if it's diabate or diabate or dia diabate Diabate. I'm not sure. Di di diabate. Uh, I'm just going to call him Muhammad for now. <laughs> Muhammad Diabate at 10. Henry Toto at 9. DeMarvian Overshone, who you left off of your list, at 8. And then I am a little bit higher on Ivan Pace Jr. than most. I've got him at my 7 slot. Maybe we can start there because he is your, was he your 10th player? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I was impressed by Ivan Pace Jr. He, similarly to Nick Herbig, not a huge guy. Um, it's the size that it leaves a little bit to question. His RAS is actually poorer than I think any other guy on my list. Uh, just a five six three RAS. He's got very poor size. Um, five ten and a half, two hundred and thirty one pounds. His explosiveness grade and his agility grade are both okay or good. His speed is good, not great. He's got a pretty poor 10-yard split, so not great out of the blocks, but his top speed is perfectly fine, a 4.62, 40 time. Um, but the thing about pace that I found interesting enough to include him, where, whereas guys of his size I, I left off of my list, he is a senior, uh, but he's only 22.2 years old, so he's not the oldest guy in the class. I really like his pass rush ability, despite being a smaller guy, I had a 93.3 pass rush grade, according to PFF in his last year. Um, we also see this is one of those guys I'm always looking for players that consistently improve year on year. And that has been the case with with pace his 2020 uh, through 2022 PFF overall grades were 62.8 to an 83.0 to a 93.2 he's a perfectly competent coverage guy um his his size and speed will allow him to hang with a a probably decent number of slot sized receivers 
But if you get anybody in there that is a big slot or if he's having to go against a tight end, it's not going to be a very pretty situation. Um, it, you, he's got a, a higher missed tackle rate than you'd like, 13.1% in his senior year. Um, but I do think that he's the kind of guy a team could totally take a flyer on at the beginning to middle of day three and could become a guy that has some really – really impressive reps. He, he's the kind of guy that may not turn into a star, but it wouldn't shock you at all. If six years from now, he's got a five minute highlight reel where you've just used that straight line speed to blaze him through a gap or blaze him around the edge and, and get to the quarterback immediately. JT, what, what about pace that stood out to you? What were you impressed by? Um, a lot of the same. I mean, those, those, grades can't be discounted i think 93.2 i believe was his overall grade which puts him first of all pff linebackers last year he had, he's good in both the pass and run defense grades with a 93.3 pass rush grade and a 90.7 rush crush rush grade but the thing to me that stands out is that yes those were all very good but it's more of a concern of the competition he was playing against. Mm -hmm. You know, he he's not playing in exactly the the best uh, conference out there. His probably the team he went up against, who had the best offensive line and the best offense this past year, was Arkansas, which was the first game of the year, True. which was also his lowest scoring uh, PFF grade graded game with a 57.4 could also be just because it's the beginning of the season it's tough However, that that um kind of went into my my studies of him the big thing for me though is is the height he is 510 and i think you said an inch or something like that he's 510 and a half something around half. there yeah which is one percentile for linebackers uh, right. um, according to mock, dra mock draftable and that kind of shows in his his coverage grade uh, with a 70.6 not not bad as well um but still i i've seen a lot of comparisons and i'm gonna make the same comparison here that he's like a david long light um i don't mm. think he's gonna be exactly the same as david long but he does have a similar situation coming out of college um right it could be a day three guy maybe um in the uh, fifth or sixth round for me yeah he on the consensus board he's at 154 so that's a round five guy i think that's around the area you'd get him and and i totally agree that there's some shades of david long there and that's where the titans got david long in that 2019 draft i believe he was the fifth round pick um so that would that would kind of track there let me talk about demarvian overshone a little bit since you left him off your list i'll be curious to hear if there's anything here that is uh, that you disagree with or maybe is the reason why you left him off but some of the reasons why I liked him and I have him as my linebacker eight in this draft class, he's got an 8.12 RAS elite speed, four, five, six, 40, a one, five, five, 10 yard split, really, really explosive and has great top end speed for a linebacker. Great explosiveness grade, a 36 and a half inch vertical, 10 foot broad jump. It's his agility and his size that leaves a little bit to be desired. Now, six, two and a half. Uh, he's he's plenty tall, but he's only 229. So he plays really lean for a tall guy. Um, his agility is is really the main concern. Um, his shuttle was a, a very poor four, four, seven. It was red on the RAS chart. And his three cone was a seven, one, seven, which is just average. I, I think when you look into his story, though, if you pull up his profile on like a PFF or the athletic or wherever you start to realize, okay, a fifth year senior had some inconsistencies at times, but okay, let's look at his stats. Let's look at the trends. This is another guy who I think is on the upswing. The big question mark when you start to look over the entire overview is what happened to him in his 2021 season. If you took out the 21, 2021 season for this guy and just gave us his 2020 and 2022 years, I think he'd be much more uh, highly regarded in this draft class. Here are his PFF grades. In 2020, 68.2. 2021, bottoms out to 44.3. And then in 2022, 71.5 gets back up and to his highest mark of his career. 
Um, a pretty high missed tackle rate, 13.2%. It's his pass rush ability that is the marquee for him. Um, it leaves a little bit to be desired in terms of coverage. Uh, he's he's not the most instinctive guy in coverage. Um, he got some balance issues that are that are concerning. Um, that's something that I'm I'm seeing on most every write up for him is that he's just got balance issues that show up, especially as a tackler and in coverage. His entire career had he had a 19.2 percent missed tackle rate. So you can imagine the averages there. If he had 13 percent his senior year. Uh, it, probably wasn't great his junior year that 44 grade for pff um not positive off the top of my head i don't see it here but i'd imagine that was a very very high missed tackle rate and then just his size the slimness as a linebacker is a little bit concerning but i think he's a rangy guy he plays well against the run he plays well as a pass rusher um his best plays are probably out runs out wide where he can just keep pace with the guy sprinting uh, sideline to sideline. Uh, but I, I like him overall. I think he's a rangy guy. I think you can use that size, that interesting size of his to your advantage. Um, but, but what about him? Was it just that there wasn't one element of his game that was necessarily um, inspiring that, that turns you off on him, JT? Well, for me, it was just, you talk about his speed. Like he, he's a very fast dude. But there, there's three or four guys who are even faster in this draft class. This, if, this, if this linebacking group has one thing, it's speed this year. And the, he just fell into a tier three or four for me when it comes to those. I, I took it more as like uh, traits that I'm really looking for and then kind of tiered these guys. And he just happened to, whether it be from uh, his speed perspective or a coverage perspective, he just fell out of that uh, tier three or four for me. Um, something I value a lot for linebacker position is the coverage. And he, he still like, he brought his stock back up in his best year in 2022 still wasn't the greatest coverage guy, but another big red flag for me was that missed tackle rate. You talked about over his uh, playing career, he had a 19.2% missed tackle rate did not, do very well in 2022 with a 13.2 missed tackle rate. Those are just some of the red flags for me um, on top of that. There are just faster guys in this class. Yeah, he's on the consensus board. He's the 94th overall guy. So projected to go um, maybe in late day two or early day three. Do you want to talk about our, our buddy Henry Toto a little bit? You want sure. to kind we, of lead off that conversation that. because I know we both have relatively strong thoughts on him. We both ended up including him on our lists, but I was hard pressed to put him on there. I ended up putting him at ninth. Where did you have him? I had him at eighth. Yeah. Okay. So what, what were your thoughts overall on, on Henry? Um, he was a guy who came in at my like second tier of linebackers and coverage. I mm -hmm. think that's where his skills really shine for sure. He, he was, he was good in college and coverage. I think ultimately to your point, he kind of built his stock this year, but also the big red flag that is pushing him down draft boards is that in 2020, he had a 51.7 PFF in 2021. He had a 50.3. And then mm -hmm. in 2022, he jumped all the way up to a 70.4. So you have to think where is, where did that development come from? Exactly. Um, now I'm not saying that he couldn't have just things clicked for him, but um, there are definitely a bunch of question marks. If you're looking for him to uh, pass rush, you want to look somewhere else. He had a 61.4 yeah. pass rush grade this past season. For me, though, I think he he is good in coverage. He's one of those guys that um, that I'll say a bunch today that if you put him in the right scheme, he can probably do really well for you. But ultimately, he lacks... Um, in a couple of areas like the broad jump and and um, the long jump at the at the combine, he just lacks that jump and explosiveness of a couple other yep. guys on this list, like a Jack Campbell or someone like that. Yeah, he's a guy that really relies on his speed because outside of that, it's there's a lot that's left to be desired. His size is very poor, six one flat, two twenty seven very undersized for a linebacker shuttle time was very poor explosiveness vertical and broad jumps like you said were poor to average it's his speed where he's got a great rating on his ras 
he just when you when you study the tape, you're like, okay, is he going to be a pass rusher? No, not really. Is he a coverage guy? Eh, no, not really. Is he a great run? Is he just a run stuffer? Eh, is he is he an ace tackler? Eh, no, actually, he's, he can't really tackle. Like if that, you watch this guy, he's got. I don't know what his his missed tackle rate is. Uh, but as I'm sitting here talking about it, I'm for sure going to look it up. It's uh, 14.4. Okay. So yeah. yeah, the highest overall missed tackle rate in their final year, at least that we've covered so far. I just, yeah, I don't, I don't know. His best performances last year were against Vanderbilt and Austin P and his worst were against his best competition, really bad performances against LSU, Tennessee, Arkansas, Auburn. So I just don't know what a team is going to look at in Henry Toa Toa out of Alabama and say, I got to have this guy. Now, he's at 88th overall on the consensus board. I'm going to kind of be shocked if he goes on day two. I think he's a lock to fall to day three because for a guy that was talked about a lot in college, I just don't think he brings a ton to the next level. Let me talk about Muhammad Diab- Diabate, Diabete, whatever, whatever his name is. I really need to figure out what his name is because I, I quite like him. And it seems pretty obvious, JT, that the Titans are very interested in him. He is one of, I believe, two linebackers the Titans have used one of their top 30 visits on so far. They've used 11 at last count, and he has been one of them out of Utah. He on the consensus board is a lower rated guy, 190th overall. So somebody that you'd expect to be available on day three in that fifth to seventh or fifth to sixth round area. I wouldn't be shocked if he continues to trend more towards the fourth to fifth round area. He's risen 16 spots on the consensus board in the past couple of days and continues to get more and more play. I think as more and more NFL teams start to look into him, then the, the, uh, the ears across the board start to perk up a little bit. His RAS is very nice a 9.12 RAS. He's got great speed, great agility, great explosion. It's his size that is a little bit concerning. Now, six, three, almost six, three, actually right at six, three and a half. Um, so he's perfectly tall, actually quite tall for a linebacker. It's his weight. That's concerning 225. Uh, that's a 2.11 out of 10 grade, according to RAS. So definitely some, some size concerns there. He's a long lanky guy that is going to win with his speed and uh, just explosive physical prowess. But he is, I think the kind of guy that folks will be more likely to take a chance on than perhaps a Henry Toa Toa in that day three, fourth, fifth, sixth round area because he is the kind of guy you can take a flyer on because of his, uh, because of his athleticism. He is a freaky athlete. And in college, he, you know, w- was more raw than these other guys were. I think it's fair to say he was a pretty incomplete, um, incomplete project, but I think teams are going to look at him and his freaky athleticism, athleticism and say, give us that project. We want to work on that project. It's his pass rush ability that really wins for him. He uses that crazy athleticism, that high end speed, that great motor to, uh, to get home 83.9 pass rush grade, elite, elite stuff. He's a fine run defender. It's his coverage grade that really knocks him. If he was an average coverage guy, he'd be a top five linebacker for me, but 42.4%, uh, 42.4 grade rather for his coverage very, very, very poor. And he's, he's got to improve his tackling, uh, ability, just 19.7 or excuse me, all of 19.7% missed tackles, not great at all. So it, his ability and coverage and his ability to be an open field tackler are where he gets dinged, but man, as a, as a pass rusher and as a freaky athlete project, I like him a lot. Yeah, I, I like him, but like you said, that missed tackle rate and the the poor coverage grade kind of put him right past Henry Toa Toa for me, um, just because, of, of course, it may be a little bit of the Alabama factor that you, you still are playing a little better competition. And so mm-hmm. that his, that his, since his metrics in the past year were a little better, I'm giving him the slight edge, but I put him on my board. Of course, he's I believe 201 on the consensus board here. So it's mm. a big jump for a lot of us to put him on our boards, but he's rising quickly. And I think we both put him on our board because of the Titans visits. And as well as he kind of came onto my radar when in front of the show, Zach Lyons over at football and other F words talked a lot about mm. him. And I was like, I got to check this guy out. 
um, definitely could see why the Titans would like him in the in with their fifth or uh, sixth round pick. Um, definitely a guy who's going to excel in the pass in the pass rush where they don't really need him to be that coverage guy. Signing a guy like Aziz Al Shair to be that coverage guy, mm-hmm. they kind of could put them in a one-two tandem there. So I see why they like him, and it didn't go unnoticed. So that's why he ranks number nine on my board. Yeah, and and we I should have mentioned this at the top. We're doing this positional series on the show, kind of in reverse order of how interesting that position is to the Titans in this draft. And of course, linebacker is very low on their to-do list after their activity in free agency. So that's what we're starting here. And we're going to save the, you know, wide receiver, tight end, quarterback episodes, t- uh, tackle episodes for last because that is the most fun ones to do and the mo- we'll have the most to say on those guys for sure. Who's the last guy in your bottom four of the top 10 that we haven't discussed? We've talked all four of mine. Um, my number seven here is O.M. Popo at from Okay, Auburn. so I don't have him on my list. Tell me what you liked about him. Um, he is a guy that came in my second tier of coverage guys. He okay. uh actually just has the speed that I was looking for. He had a four, three, or a four, three, nine, 40, which puts him in the 98th percentile uh, mixed in with his coverage. I just thought he was un, un, um, in uh, comparison to overshone. I just think his speed and his coverage was a lot better than um, overshone. So that's why I put him up there. Um, he had a 77.2 coverage grade, only a 6.9% missed tackle grade. The only thing that knocks him for me, and maybe that's why you didn't put him on y- your board, is that his build is an issue. He has yep. uh, 13% height and 5% weight, both respectively. Um, but when when you get these speedier coverage guys, that that kind of you kind of is a give and take, right? <laughs> um, yes. With he's going to be able to s- keep with those wide receivers, but if he's put up against a bigger body guy like a tight end or so, um, he's going to have trouble. But I like his speed and I like his coverage, which was good enough for me to put him at number seven. He's number one thirty two overall on the consensus board. All right, let's move on to our next three number. I, I guess six through four getting closer and closer to our top guys. My number six is Trenton Simpson, much lower than most would have him. Um, But I'll explain. I just was not, I'm not crazy about him to be honest. And and I'll go into detail as to why. Then at five, I have Noah Sewell, brother of Panay Sewell, who plays for the lions uh, out of Oregon. And then at number four, Dorian Williams out of Tulane JT, who was your number six through four linebackers? At number six, I have Noah Sewell out of Oregon. At number five, I have Dorian Williams out of Tulane. And then at number four, uh, very much lower than the consensus here, I have Drew Sanders out of wow. Arkansas. Yeah. Wow. Okay, we're gonna have to have a conversation about that one because I completely disagree. But we'll wait. We'll we'll get we'll start with um, the guys we agreed on: Dorian Williams and Noah Sewell. We both had in this range. Um, wh- you want to pick your poison? Who would you like to discuss? Yeah, I mean, we can start with uh, Noah Sewell, um, okay. mostly because he's a guy who I put my second tier of guys who are going to be able to blitz. Yep, 89th overall um, on the consensus board. Uh, he he's young and his traits are less than uh, less than great. It's average, mm-hmm. um, and he he's not bad in coverage, but does need some work. He was a guy I had to put in the middle because uh, to write this point home, if the if the right team picks him up and plays him to his strengths, he could be one of those top 15 linebackers in the league, but it's just going to come down to a team identifying those and putting him in the right scheme. He's not going to be a can do it all linebacker. um, But in, in those kind of situations where you need a blitzer guy, um, he, he's going to be, he's going to be your guy to take in the third or fourth round here. And he, he's young. Um, I believe he was a junior, I believe coming into coming out he was a, uh, he's a sophomore, sophomore. A sophomore. So yes, yep. very only young, 20. Only, only 20 years old. Um, so definitely a lot of room to improve and grow in the right system. Yeah. With Sewell, it's, it's, of the three of the three legs you're trying to trying to complete here as a linebacker, 
He's a perfectly fine pass rusher, perfectly fine coverage guy, above average in both departments. It's his run defense that you you wish he, there was a little bit more there. Now he's a good good enough tackler, 12.5% missed tackle rate. Um, in terms of size, it's his speed that wins, which makes sense considering he's a great rusher and a, and a great guy in coverage and, and not necessarily the, the run stuff you're looking for because he is more of a slender guy, 6'1", 246. Um, he's got a decent weight to him, but height-wise, you know, just, just average. Not the strongest player in this draft class, but his speed at 464 is very good. Um, his, his splits are very good. His explosiveness and his agility are fine. His overall RAS is an eight, three, two. So, um, a, a really positive, positive situation there, but it's that combination of very good speed and good size that make him one of the more balanced guys in this class. That's why he's my linebacker five. I think that he, um, can do two things really well. And frankly, I think run defense for a guy who's almost 250 is something that can be taught at the next level. So that's why I had him there. Um, I'll go ahead and cover who else did we? Oh, Dorian Williams out of Tulane. That's who we had in common. Dorian Williams, 8.76 RAS score, elite, elite speed, 449. First guy we've talked about with sub four five speed, I believe. A 152 10 yard split, very explosive off the line and has great top end speed. Fine explosion as an athlete, um, uh, average vertical, slightly above average broad jump at, at 10 feet even. His size is really poor. Um, not the poorest of any of these guys, but it's definitely the the, the weakness for him. Now he's got 33.75 inch arms. So his ability to work as, as a, a rusher and, and work in the edge position, I think, is there. He's got the reach for it, but his height, He's 6'1", 228. Like I said, not great. Uh, 228 is not going to be the bruising run stopper that you're looking for. Uh, when you look at, at, his, as his, at his stats, excuse me, in his, in his most recent season, um, he's 21.7 years old. He's another guy that had two really great years, bookending a, a really bad year in 2021. He had a 48.7 grade, just a really rough second season in college, but his third and first seasons, he had an 85.7 and an 83.3 grade. Very, very good in coverage. His, his undersized element of his game plays well in coverage. He had an 87 overall coverage grade, elite coverage grade, only 8.3% missed tackle rate. So despite being smaller, not the run stuff are not going to lay the wood on you necessarily, but he's going to tackle you if he gets his hands on you. And then his pass rush grade is above average as well. It's his run defense. That's just average, but of those three legs, coverage ability, rush ability, uh, run defense, he's not got a glaring hole at any of those three. And that's why I made him my uh, number four overall linebacker, JT. What'd you love about Dorian Williams? Yeah, he's just dead middle there for me. Like you said, he he doesn't do anything too bad, um, which is why I put him right there at five. He's 147 on the consensus board. Um, he's my second coverage guy. So it's kind of like uh, my number one linebacker overall, which is, shouldn't come as a surprise to any no, of you. So no one alert. who knows this show is guessing who your linebacker was. Um, <laughs> so him and then the second tier starts and he's number one in my second tier of coverage guys. He's got really good speed of four, four, nine forty, which puts him in the 94th percentile. Um, just like you said, he's an all around uh, good linebacker, but his coverage is I, I'm, I'm more of a person who, who, puts coverage above a lot of the other ones, mm -hmm. a lot of the other traits. So that's why he's number five for me, which is understandable in the modern NFL. That's, that's the element of their game that uh, is maybe not more important, but I'd argue finding good coverage linebackers is significantly harder than finding a good run stuffing linebacker. For example, that's the element of the linebacking position that is in most demand. Usually let's talk, let's leave your outlier aside for a second in Drew Sanders out of Arkansas, because I have him much higher than you. I have Trenton Simpson, I'm assuming much lower than you, considering you've not mentioned him yet. Is he in your top three? He is. Okay, so where is he on your board? He's three. Three, okay. I've had, I have him at six. I have him below 
both of the guys we just talked about, Dorian Williams out of Tulane and Noah Sewell out of Oregon. So Trenton Simpson out of Clemson. Let me explain why I wasn't in love with him. Five-star recruit out of uh, the 2020 class of high schoolers. Very much a prototype linebacker. He's got good ability in all three legs of the game. Coverage, pass rush, defense, fine missed tackle rate, 11.7. He's got a 9.83 RAS, elite speed, great agility and explosiveness, good size. So off the top, you're like, Okay, he's not got a glaring hole anywhere. He's got elite speed, but beyond that, not anything really to write home about. But but it's just it's it's good, right? It's good, not great. It's not awe inspiring, but it's certainly um, tolerable. 6'2", 235, 66th overall guy on the PFF big board. I'm not sure where he is on the consensus board. He's 47th overall, the third linebacker on the consensus board. Again, my linebacker six. The things about him that just I couldn't get around. He's in the 97th percentile for for speed, four four three. I think the fastest guy in this in this group, if I'm not mistaken. He's a very versatile defender, but actually that versatility is what kind of turned me off on him. Because he's got this elite intensity. He's got this crazy aggressiveness. His motor is turned up to 11 at all times. But that gets him in a lot of trouble. He tends to over pursue. He, he can, you know, a step a step too early in the wrong direction. And, and suddenly he's boxed out of a play. Um, he's not a, a great recognition guy in terms of coverage. His zone ability left some something to be desired for me. Um, he's also kind of a tweener and th that's that versatility that I didn't love. I love versatility in general in the NFL and NFL players, but he's kind of a safety slash linebacker slash edge player. He's, he's a do it all guy and he's done it all in college, but at the NFL level, I think being a, a jack of all trades at linebacker in that way, isn't necessarily a great thing. And for a guy who's size wise is just average, I'm not sure his crazy. He's got. I don't think he's got the crazy athleticism necessarily to make up for that. Uh, JT, what did you like about him? Maybe a little bit more than me. He is an outlier on my list, mostly because I have him at three. Because, like you said, the speed is another thing that I value really high with these linebackers. 97 sure. percentile, ran a four four three forty. Um, he's the only guy that I'm going to go um super mega ultra traits over tape on this list here okay. um because you I have just to with these clemson guys this entire clemson class in in this draft it, it's such a tough eval because they were so bad yeah um but i i just think that that versatility has to mean something and i think um given the right situation those traits could really shine and make him a top 10 or 12 linebacker all right, now tell me about Drew Sanders, who you have as your linebacker four. Is that correct? Yes, I have him at four. Okay, he's my linebacker one in this class. So I'll let you talk about why you don't love him, and then I'll go I'll rant about why I love this guy. Um, that's really interesting. But uh, considering, I don't know, maybe maybe you you got uh, you got Jared Stillman pilled yesterday when he was comparing uh, Drew, Drew Sanders to Ray Lewis. Which no no maybe... no, no 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 that's ridiculous. No. <laughs> he said that on on he did radio. Yes, I mean I'm not. I wish I could say I'm surprised. I'm not shocked, but I am disappointed. Um, he he's good. He's good at shedding the block when when he's going up against uh the run game and uh he's a good blitzer in the, in the pass in the pass rush. Yes, he is. Um the problem with me is that he's just like you said as a as a knock to some of these other guys, he's really tall. Um he's one of he the is tallest very tall. He's one of the tallest linebackers in this Six, four and class. And a half. Um and and when it came to it, it, it he really is just not an instinctive tackler. Uh I found he has a 19.6% missed tackle rate, um, which for your number one overall linebacker might be a little concerning. That's tough. Um, yep. But I just, when I was watching the tape, I just, he, he doesn't, he doesn't have that instinctive uh, tackling ability. He kind of, when I was watching his tape, he kind of goes with the flow of the, like when, when he's, going into pass and run block. I think he has that instinctive ability, but when he's in the open space, trying to get 
those big tackles, he's he's not uh, finding the correct gaps, and he's having a hard time kind of making those decisions for himself, which is why he fell to number four for me. That's interesting, and I I, I think that those concerns are fair, especially the missed tackle rate. The reason the reasons that I love Drew Sanders and he's my number one linebacker in this class, like you said, six, four and a half, uh, just shy of six, four and a half, 235 pounds. So pretty lean, especially for his height, had a, a four, five, nine, 40 time, 37 inch vert, uh, nine foot, 10 inch broad jump, a nine two eight total overall RAS. Very good. He's got great speed, um, good size and explosion a good agility grade. So no big, no big holes in terms of his overall athletic profile. He was a top ranked athlete in his class coming out of high school and the 22nd overall player started at Alabama, did two years there, uh, played in 15 games and then transferred to Arkansas to play, I believe 12 total games this past season. He's a guy that you've seen consistent growth year on year his 2020 campaign, he had a 28.8 PFF grade in the cellar and then got something to click in 2021, jumped up to a very acceptable 62.7 and then had a very, very good 2022 campaign, 79.2 grade on PFF, uh, the PFF grade database here. Very good pass rusher, very good coverage player, good run defender of well above average grades in all of those departments. On PFF, you look at his games last year, he didn't really have any glaringly poor performances except for one against Texas A&M. But beyond that, very consistent guy. He's the kind of versatile versatile player on defense that I am looking for as opposed to the versatility, the over-versatility, I suppose, that I, I was turned off by in Trenton Simpson. With Sanders, very versatile, played a ton of positions in high school, primarily played edge at Alabama and then was changed to an off-ball linebacker in Arkansas. But he has that experience as an edge player, and so he's got a very polished, very nice ability to get after the quarterback blitz around the end and in between the tackles. Um, in 2022, he had, here just to kind of demonstrate his versatility, these stats, he's all over the field defensively. 103 total tackles, 13.5 tackles for loss, nine and a half sacks, an interception, five passes defend defended at the line, uh, three forced fumbles, 39 total pressures, which was fourth among all off ball linebackers per PFF. He's a very good tackler. He's not the best tackler in terms of his success rate, obviously. And that's, if you're looking to, to knock him, that's a fair area to uh, dock him some points. But when he gets his hands on you, he is a good tackler. He's got a good ability to shed blocks. He's got solid vision. He's an anticipatory defender in coverage. Very aggressive downhill style that you have to love. It works out well and poorly at times. You know, that aggressiveness can be a blessing and a curse. Um, very good all-around athlete, obviously. Uh, but he lacks that final gear. It was the main note that I had in looking for cons. I, I, he doesn't have that fourth or fifth gear that some guys have. Um, and so I, I, I wished that there was another level to his explosiveness, but he is a true three down player. I think that he's a true three down linebacker. That's the kind of versatility that you're looking for in your, in your number one overall guy. If you're looking to, to take a guy in the second round, I would take him in the second round for sure. Um, he's only got one year of off ball linebacker experience. And that's a big part of the reason why I think he's my linebacker one, one year at the position played so well. Uh, kind of really broke out in college. I expect him to continue to improve. I don't think he's hit his ceiling at this position at all because you still see things like his eyes getting lost in the backfield, lost in coverage, the kind of thing that you would expect the mental element of the game to catch up for him a little bit. So that's why I love him. Let's talk about the guys that we both love. We can get into our top three linebackers here, at JT, before we get out of here. Uh, I'll give you my top three because since I've already given you my number one is Drew Sanders. My linebacker two is your boy, Jack Campbell. And my linebacker three is the sort of wild card, Diane Henley out of uh, WSU, I think, Washington State. Uh, we can talk about these guys in a minute, but JT, who were your top three, starting with, of course, Jack Campbell at linebacker one, I'm assuming? Yeah, so so number one has to be uh, Jack Campbell here. Uh, oh number two is Diane Hanley, and then three was Trenton Simpson. Okay, 
So I'll let you go ahead and get any. Did you already give thoughts on Trenton Simpson? I did. Okay, cool. So if you've already, if we've already covered that, um, let's, let's do, let's just do the two guys we haven't talked about then. I suppose. Yeah. yeah? It's your number one and number three two my number yes. two and the number three so we love these guys we'll save jack campbell for the the firework finale because we've talked about him so much he's the only linebacker we've talked about on this show uh before this episode let's do diane henley who's the complete opposite a guy that before i started studying these linebackers i mean this was we we picked the hardest assignment to start this series with jt because it required the most extra research um I, the notes i have on the other positions pretty much across every position besides safety and, and linebacker. I, I have extensive notes already for these guys. It's kind of slim pickings. This was one that I was really surprised that I hadn't heard of already. JT, tell me about what you loved out of Diane Henley. Well, he definitely popped up on my board because uh, he's a guy who uh, converted from wide receiver um, which yes. is very unique uh, for him. He's 14. Yeah, you know, the old wide receiver to linebacker pipeline. Very exactly. Uh, and you can definitely see that in his height and weight. He's 14% uh, height and fifth percentile weight. So that's yep. definitely a cause for concern, but makes sense if you're, if you are transitioning from the wide receiver, but it does give him a very unique situation that um, if you want a super fluid and twitchy linebacker who's going to yes. be uh, is able the word of the day for diane henley if he's going to be able to uh hang with those wide receivers and tight ends he is your guy um his his coverage wasn't the greatest um but but he's able to um keep with those guys and if, if you want a twitchy and fluid linebacker he's going to be your man in this draft another kind of red flag for me was that he's a six year student. So 23 mm -hmm. years old already. So uh, a little on the older side, but still he's a very intriguing prospect to me. Yeah. I, I find him interesting and it, it's kind of a double edged sword because yes, he is older for sure. Sixth year player. And yet he's very young in this position. Like you said, transitioned from wide receiver to off ball linebacker. And so you still, you see on tape mentally, he's still very much figuring it out. You look at year on year production. He increased his PFF grade year on year, 62 to 66 to 73. So I think he's a guy that's still getting better and better. And you can look at his game by game grades, very inconsistent last year, which you could see as, well, this is an inconsistent player. He's, you know, we, we want somebody that's got some more consistency. I see that as, this is a guy that's still very much figuring out this position. He's a freaky athlete that I, I think will ultimately, if he's in the right system, getting coached up by the right guys, be a, we were talking about a David, a David long light earlier. This might be the David long premium edition he could, he could ultimately, I see his, his ceiling as being a really, really great um, rangy linebacker. That's a three down guy. He's got that versatility because of his athleticism. A pass rushing is his is calling card, but he's got above average grades for run defense and in coverage. Uh, an eight five seven RAS. He's got elite speed, um, great explosiveness, but it's the size, of course, that knocks him. Seventy four tackles last season, and here's the craziest part, JT. If you want a tackling machine, this is your guy. Did you see his missed tackle rate? Uh, a, I a, I don't think I did actually. A, an eye popping 5.2% missed tackle rate. It's like half of the best that we've talked about for any other guy. I think th the best next best guy we talked about, it had like a 12 something. This, this guy only missed tackles on 5.2% of his opportunities. Th that's ridiculous. That has to be the, the, the number one ranking among linebackers. Um, but, but I, I do love the fluidity. That's the word you used that I think is the, the nail, uh, on, hitting the nail on the head with this guy. He's a very solid tackler, very twitchy athlete, but it's that fluidity that you see very wide receiver esque, that wide receiver movement ability has stayed with him. And he's still very much a guy that, that can then move with the best of them in, in coverage. I think that as he continues to refine his ability, improve his skills, he's going to turn into a really nice coverage player as well. Do we want to talk about Jack Campbell now? Is it time? Of course. It's it's always time to talk to talk about uh Jack Campbell. 
Let me go first. I'll, I won't uh, spend long. I'll, I'll cede the floor to you. I'll just kind of give you the appetizer, and then you can you can go in on your guy, Jack Campbell. With Campbell, there's I'll 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 stick with the things that if I was looking for concerns, these would be my concerns, so that I can set you up to just rant and rave about how awesome he is. He's a little bit rigid and stiff in his movement, especially in his coverage skills. He's an old school throwback linebacker, right? This is if you're looking for a true thumping middle linebacker this is your guy this is the guy in this class to be that true old school bona fide middle linebacker green dot on the helmet baby let's ride maniac commanding the defense instinctive player you see it all over his tape he he moves in a way that you can tell half the time he is not thinking about it he's just moving with the flow of the game and is typically his instincts typically reward him and he's right in that way He's got a 998 RAS, great speed, elite agility, explosiveness, and size. The, from an athletic profile, when we talked about it a ton at the combine, getting to see him in person, getting to see him on the field in person, stud athlete. So he's a freaky outlier in that way that I think you can use in a lot of different ways on the field. He uses his size very well. He lays the wood on folks, hit, hits like a brick. Very good in zone coverage. It's his man coverage ability that is a little bit more concerning, doesn't quite have the speed to hang at that level all the time. He's being trained by Luke Keekley in the offseason, which we found out in recent weeks, which if you I mean, if you wanted the cherry on top for a guy that you think could be an awesome middle linebacker, one of the best we've seen in recent memory in Luke Keekley, former Carolina Panther, is a great way to start. But the only other criticism I have here before I, I let you go to town on on Jack Campbell is he's too often on tape beat uh, a, a step late um, on on plays or a step in the wrong direction that, that blocks him out of the play or too often getting fooled just from a mental standpoint his instinctiveness I think works in his favor at times but I think it works against him at times when he should be using his brain a little bit more and seeing what obviously is there that he doesn't quite comprehend in time. JT, what are your thoughts on Jack Campbell? Well, it's really interesting because I think uh, like a one of those yeah NFL rookie watch yesterday broke that news, but that's something I was aware of at least for a week now. I believe that Jack Campbell was uh, working with Luke Keekley right this this past uh, your former neighbor by season. the way yes right my, actually connection. my my neighbors neese's husband actually oh so of course i've been right. i've been to i've been to many basically saint, your best friend then yeah many of saint patrick's day parties with him i also uh, went okay. to the same high school as him so there oh, you go there you go um i mean if you want you were de you were describing him as that hard-hitted like old school linebacker and if who would you want, guy, for sure who would you who would you want to train you uh, if you are one of those guys, I, I, I can't choice. Number one, I, I think Luke Kikli would be the, the number one choice. Yeah, he, he's he is the 94th percentile in broad jump, 95th percentile in three cone drill. He had a 92 point. I mean, he is just insane in coverage um, with a 92.9 percent. He was yeah. actually maybe maybe it was just kind of fate that he was the first person I talked to in interviews um, at the at the. Combine. I think it was fate. Um, so it just kind of the man crush there started from there and continued on. I have uh, honestly a first round grade on him. I know there's been rumblings that there is um, teams out there that are very much considering him in the back half um, of Buffalo. that first round. <laughs> Buffalo. Um, but um, he's just, he, he, as I was talking to you uh, off of the record here. Um, a lot of what, what we've talked about is that there's a lot of guys in this class who are good at one thing, but have a glaring issue mm -hmm. at the rest. And why yep. he is my number one is because he has some issues. Like you were saying, um, doesn't have that twitch of a linebacker um, is, is kind of a little bit rigid. However, if you want a complete running back or not running back, if you want a complete linebacker uh, in this He'd be draft, a decent running back, I think Jack, he's, he's, Jack, a, he's Campbell, athletic. Jack Campbell is your guy. Yes, yeah, I, I think that he is a, a. If I had to pick the safest option at the top of this group, I'd say Jack Campbell is the safest bet. 
Um, you, you love him. I like him as well. I, I, I think he's definitely going to go at the very latest in the top yeah, 10 or 12 picks on day two. Between me and friend of the show, Zach Lyons, uh, True. from football and other efforts, he gave he got, me, he asked me, well, he asked me, money down on this, yeah. uh, he asked me, I asked him, what are the odds of Jack Campbell going first overall to the Carolina <laughs> Panthers? He gave me minus 180. And then the 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 Luke Keekly Luke news is, dr- yeah. news dropped, and he uh, shifted those odds to minus three twenty. So uh, I got I still have that uh, that uh, that uh, minus one eighty. So um, hang on to that ticket. You then. know, I, I'm hanging on to that ticket. No cash sure. outs at, in the in the words of Zach Lyons. No no takes backsies. backsies. Yeah, that's um, right. So unfortunately, cannot hedge my bets here, but. I'm still riding with my my ticket in which I put the mortgage down on Jack Campbell going first overall in this draft, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna let it ride. So love that. I'm sure that's gonna work out well for you. Uh, we're done here. That's that's all for today. More linebacker talk in this draft than I ever cared to do. Glad we got it out of the way. Um, excited to continue this series over the next couple of days and weeks. We'll get into some positional groupings that are a little bit more interesting to Titans fans, but appreciate you guys sticking with us, learning a little bit about this draft class. Hope you enjoy it. You have any thoughts, comments, questions, let us know. Um, Please rate, review, subscribe, do all that good stuff. We're going to, we're going to keep it short and sweet today. That's, that's, that's it. Let's just get out of here. I'm your host, Easton freeze for producer JT. This has been the hot read podcast. We'll be back first thing Friday morning with an episode waiting for you in your inbox. Until then have a great couple of days.